David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you one of the latest releases from Grafon Faber Castell, which is called the Magnum. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this luxury offering, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Faber-Castell for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, Graf von Faber-Castell is the luxury branch of Faber-Castell. Uh, it is a German company which has been around since 1761, which is quite a long time. Uh, something interesting, according to Faber-Castell, they are the oldest trademark brand name in the United States. Uh, the company officially entered the U.S. Registry of Companies as the fifth name in the very first ledger. And since the first four companies ahead of it are no longer in business, that would make Faber-Castell the oldest. Back then, it was known as A.W. Faber. Uh, at the time, they manufactured pencils. Uh, the company was based in Germany, and it was a family-run business for over a hundred years under that name, under the leadership of several male members of the Faber family. One of the Mr. Fabers had a female heir, and he stipulated in his will that if she should marry, then she must keep the family name. Uh, this was very unusual for the times, and for a wife to actually keep her maiden name, it actually required royal approval. His daughter married a count with the last name Castell. Uh, eventually, the husband became the head of the company and led it to a great deal of success. Uh, the couple decided to hyphenate their last names and eventually transferred that idea over to the company, creating Faber-Castell. To the left, you can see the family crest, which inspired the logo for the company. Uh, the company is now run by the ninth generation of the Faber-Castell family. I think it's really neat that a company has been able to stay in the hands of a family for so many years. Okay, enough about company history. I just think learning things like that is interesting. Let's actually take a look at a pen. The Magnum arrives in this high quality wooden box. Um, inside, there is a use and care guide. And then the pen arrives in this cotton canvas pouch. Um, something I really appreciate is the bottom of the box here has a corrugated lining so you can use it to comfortably store three pens. I really wish more companies did this. For the most part, pen boxes are disposable, but with this box uh, being so nice and fitting three pens, I could imagine this finding a home on someone's desk. Uh, the ability to hold multiple pens turns this from being a single use item into one which is more functional. Uh, and then inside the pouch, we have the pen. This is the Graf von Faber-Castell Magnum. Uh, the two distinctive elements of this pen are the wooden barrel and the platinum plated trim. Uh, the barrel is made from Caucasian walnut. The company describes this as individually grained walnut wood. Um, I wasn't familiar with that term, individually grained, and I really couldn't find any references to it on the internet outside of the marketing copy for this pen. If you're familiar with this woodworking term, feel free to leave a comment in the notes below educating us on what that term actually means, but I have a feeling it's just marketing speak. The wood uh, does look nice though. The wood is characterized by its deep brown grain as well as its velvety feel. Um, with this type of material, every pen in this series is going to be unique. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It is rounded and topped with a black resin insert with the company crest surrounded by the engraved company name. Then we have the clip. Um, I do like this sloping design. Uh, the clip is hinged. Uh, and the spring is loose enough that it will fit easily in materials of varying sizes, but stiff enough that once it's in there, it's really not going anywhere. It's a nice design. Um, overall, the pen does have a cigar shape. The cap angles up and then straightens out right at the pseudo cap band. Um, I say pseudo because the band is actually just defined by four grooves in the cap, which surround the company name. Then on the back side of the cap, it says made in Germany. Uh, there is a small step down to the barrel, which then tapers down at a fairly even angle until you reach the end, which is punctuated by an elongated metal tip, which comes to a rounded point. Um, I do find the platinum plated trim to be a bit of a fingerprint magnet. It's not too bad, but I do find myself having to wipe down this pen on a frequent basis in order to keep it looking pristine. 
Um, it might have been nice to include a small polishing cloth, especially with a pen like this, where one would be really useful. Uh, the cap twists off in a single rotation, and underneath we have this very nice looking 18 karat gold nib. Um, I've always felt the nib imprint for Graf on Faber-Castells looks really classy and sharp. This pen is available in one of six different nib options. There is extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and then there is a left oblique medium and a left oblique broad, which are nice unique offerings. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The elongated metal section is platinum plated. Uh, it begins with a flare and slowly angles up until you reach some narrow threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Now, I typically am not very fond of polished metal sections. They tend to be slippery. Um, I find this one actually to be decent. I think the main reason is the low angle of incline. Uh, for me, that really helps my grip from sliding down the section. Uh, now, I tend to grip my pen right in the swale, right after the flare, but even if you grip your section slightly further back, I don't feel you're going to find it slippery, so that's nice. Um, I do like the feeling of this pen in the hand. Uh, it does have some heft to it. It just really feels solid and just feels like a quality writing instrument. And the soft, velvety wood really feels nice on the interior of your hand. Um, the cap does post, uh, and it does post securely. Um, I do find this heavy metal cap really backweights this pen and throws off the balance, so I prefer to use this pen unposted. Plus, I'm really not a huge fan of posting wooden pens where the posted cap makes contact with the wood. Over time, I would have a fear that the natural element of this pen could potentially receive damage with repeated postings. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Um, with the metal uh, in the sleeve as well as other metal parts, eye dropping this pen would not be recommended. Uh, the Graf von Faber-Castell is available from a large number of retailers uh, and it sells for right around $1,000. Uh, I mentioned up top, this is a luxury pen, but for what you receive with this pen and compared to the other pens in this price range, I feel that that price is reasonable. Uh, it's a quality, well-made, solid pen with some really nice natural elements in a really classy overall package. Uh, and as you will see in the writing sample, it writes outstanding as well. Faber-Castell nibs have always been outstanding. Uh, there are times when you can just pick up a pen and just feel the value, uh, and I feel that I can do that with this pen. So uh, it's something that I enjoy. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and the aforementioned writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Graf on Faber-Castell Magnum. I wanted to give you another closer look at this wood. It's just really nice, and I do like the deep grains on there. Uh, in regard to a couple of other pens from this company, this is an Anello Rose Gold. And here's another one called the Tamatillo in Indian Red. Uh, and then we have one of my favorite uh, pens from the company, which is the Loom, which is a really good budget offering. In regard to some non-Faber-Castell pens, we have a Pelican M1000 and a Mont Blanc 146. And then finally, we have a Sailor King of Pen in Royal Tangerine. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with that Pelican M1000, and here it is with the Sailor King of Pen, and here it is with the Mont Blanc 149. Actually, I'm sorry, 146. Before we wrote, I wanted to give you another look at this Faber-Castell nib. I just think these Graffon Faber-Castell nibs are just really classy looking uh, and just really sharp. And in regard to a writing sample, we have the Graf Vaughn Von 
and this is the Magnum. And this is a medium 18 karat gold nib. And the uh, ink I'm using here today is a Graf von Faber-Castell, which is hazelnut brown. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice kind of deep brown. It's one of my favorite browns. Uh, here it is with the Seiss Korshnak Chestnut Brown. Uh, and then here it is with uh, Visconti Sepia. And you can tell it smudged the bottom of that just a little bit. Uh, this is what the bottles look like. Um, I always like their bottles. They look classy and they're kind of some of those bottles that look really nice sitting on a desk. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, this nib is very nice. It is decently smooth with just the right amount of feedback. You can get a decent amount of flex out of this. Uh, the ink flow is very nice. In regard to reverse writing, it's slightly scratchy, but it gets the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Graf on Faber-Castell Magnum. Um, if you are looking for something in this price range, I think that this is an excellent offering. I think it offers some uh, interesting looks, some unique wood, and then the performance is outstanding as well. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.